As we continue the Celebrate Renew campaign uh, over the next two weeks, uh, we'll be gathering around the idea of finishing what we started. And next Sunday is Commitment Sunday, more on that later. And at this time, Chuck Carsonson is just gonna say a few words on how to grow our giving. So let's welcome Chuck at this time. Last time I spoke here, it was a couple years ago, I, I got so excited about speaking on this topic, I did lift this up and I broke this, so I promised them I wasn't going to do that. Now, I know a lot of you have heard me talk about giving over the years, and what I wanted to focus on today is growth and giving. I'm sure over the years, many of you have done all you could to, to help this church, to give offerings and tithes. And now we're talking about finishing off what we started and how or if you actually have that room to even grow in your giving anymore. And I know my family and I, over the years, we always stretched ourselves since we started tithing. Like more than, more than the tithe, nor the, nor, more than the normal 10% because I knew that God would provide. I knew that God had overflow and increase. And yes, because of that, we've been increasing our tithe and offering because our income's increased. I know not everybody here is in that situation, but there is a joy in giving, a joy in leaving a legacy, a joy in helping out where you can with what you have. And as you consider what you're going to offer, pledge towards Renew or towards your 2022 offering, obviously do what you normally do. And then decide, hey, is there a little room to grow? And how will God provide? Prayfully consider it and think about, you know what? I, if you've heard Pastor Andy speak on this subject, know that you're, you're in a position where you're helping leave this place better than it was. And you're able to use that little bit extra, that growth, that stretch that you may be doing when you make your pledge, when you make your commitment to pour more life into other life for years to come. Whether it's a little gift, a large gift, anything in between, everything matters, everything counts, and God blesses everything that you give and expands it and uses it for good. So we encourage you, as you consider your gift, to just think about where you're at. Don't compare yourself to other people. Do the best you can with what you got and help leave this place better for everybody else. Thank you. I invite you to turn to page 94 for the order for confession and forgiveness. We begin worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. <coughs> Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn, number 631, stanzas 1 and 3.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. join me in speaking the prayer of the day. Generous God, your son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time I invite you to turn to Psalm 19, which will be sung responsibly by verse. Today's reading is from James, the fifth chapter, starting at the 13th verse, the prayer of faith. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. 
and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any mo- anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Sends the reading. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart Be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Story time. Um, When I was living in the dorms at Iowa State, it apparently was no secret that I was the girl who goes to church. Um, Because there was one afternoon I was heading to my dorm, and um, a gentleman on the other side of my floor stopped me and said, Hey, you're the Jesus girl, right? My reputation precedes me. (laughs) Not a bad reputation to have, I don't think. Um, But I told him, um, well, in that I go to church, I would say yes. And he said, great, can I go with you? Well, this is the easiest evangelism I have ever done. So I said, of course. And so then he, I'm telling him about my church, and and he's telling me about his history of going to church. And, you know, finally he asked me, okay, so... um, wait, which church do you go to? And I said, well, I go to the Lutheran church, literally right behind our dorm. And he goes, oh, oh, no, 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 no. No, I go to the real church. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) I had no idea I was going to a fake one this whole time. 
Um, meaning, uh, he explained after I <laughs> requested an explanation, um, that he went to the Catholic church that was right next to the dorm. Oh, okay, the real church. I'm going to be talking in a little bit about the lines that we've drawn between each other as Christians, and if that is helping us or hurting us. But one thing I think we need to keep in mind, and it's something I brought up last week, and that is this whole church thing, this whole faith thing, is not about what we're doing. It's about what God does. So that's our question this morning. What is God doing? We talk about it often, whether it's about baptism or communion or just worship in general, that God is up to something in it all. But what? And the truth is, it can be different for different people. Different people can experience God differently, and the same person can experience God differently just depending on the day. This morning, we're going to focus on four things that God is up to in this community of believers. God is unifying. Second, that God is including. Third, that God is stirring. And fourth, that God is rewarding. And I know I am breaking the rule of three, but since this is my last message before December, I figured I'd give you a bonus. Just as my mom would say, one for the road. <laughs> and as we work our way through these points this morning, I want you to intentionally be thinking about the times when you've experienced these things. I think that oftentimes when we ask the question, why church, we think the question is really, why community? And the truth is, a big part of church is community, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, but I think the reason that you all come back every Sunday is because you know that it's more than that. Now, one thing I really appreciate about this area, the Cambridge Isani area, is that there is no shortage of community. Everywhere you go, people are gathered, people are doing things. So it would be easy for you to fulfill your need for community in other places. But we know that something bigger happens in this place. We know that it is centered around what God is up to. Now the first thing that God is up to that we're going to talk about this morning is directly connected to the story I shared. And that is that God is unifying, meaning that we are all on the same team. See, while we've spent hundreds and hundreds of years creating distinctions between how we do church and how others do church, between what we confess to believe and what others confess to believe, between which hymns we sing, how we govern ourselves, who's allowed to be in leadership, I could go on and on. While we've been busy dividing ourselves with every difference of opinion, God has always been in the business of bringing us together. Now, the gospel passage that I read this morning begins with the disciples and Jesus. They're sitting down and they're having a conversation. And John, one of the disciples, tells Jesus, Hey, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and, but don't worry, like, we tried to stop him because he does not follow us. Like I've said before, I love the disciples, and they try so hard to get it right. But next to Jesus, they just always come off as human. I imagine what happened is that the disciples were walking along, and they witnessed someone doing an exorcism, you know, just like any other Tuesday. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and they heard the person say something like, in the name of Jesus, and the disciples are probably thinking, wait a minute, we are the Jesus people. We don't know this person. They're not in our club. They can't do that. And thus, a wall was built. A distinction was made between us and them. Because the disciples' question wasn't, are they doing this exorcism for the right reasons? Instead, the question was, are they part of our club? Are they doing it the way we would do it? And I have to confess that I have seen this play out recently. 
and I'm the one who did it. Not an exorcism. That's not, we don't, I don't do this. But there is a distinction that I have made and many ordained pastors have made between ourselves who have, you know, attended seminary, gone through the call process, all of those things, and those who get ordained online by clicking a little button, sometimes like paying like 20 bucks. It's a little different. See, I'm still doing it. So the thing that we need to come to terms with, that I needed to come to terms with was, what's the difference if the intentions are the same? I have seen weddings done by people who were ordained online that were more faithful, more spiritual than an ordained path, than a seminary track ordained pastor. And I have seen or seminary ordained pastors do weddings that I thought were weird and boring. And there, the only, there is no distinction between the two other than the work that we put into it. And I'm sure you could argue all kinds of other differences and I know what they are. I've come up with them myself too. But it also, it comes down again to like the disciples were. If they're not in our club, they can't do it, but I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's right. I think it's human and important to place value on the work you do. And we have to remember that at the end of the day, it is what God is doing that gets us there. Now, I don't know if you've been on the internet lately, but there's a lot of conversations and debate over who believes what and what do real Christians believe. And we're so busy shouting back and forth at each other that anyone on the outside looks at this mess and wonders, why would I want to be a part of that? I've talked to people who are turned off by the idea of Christianity in general. Them saying, how am I supposed to know what you guys even believe when you all can't even agree on what you all believe? We've gotten to the point where we're more concerned about being the ones who are doing it right than we are concerned about the actual mis mission. But then again, it is difficult to tell others with our mouths that Jesus' message is love when our actions are telling a different story of debate and division. And we know that those divisions were never part of the plan because of what Jesus says next. Jesus says, do not stop him. Remember, the disciples had just talked about stopping this, trying to stop this exorcism from happening. And Jesus says, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. And that leads us to the next thing God is doing. God is including others. Jesus didn't know the person that was doing the exorcism. It's possible he never even met the guy. Instead, Jesus is getting this bigger message, and that was, it was working. Jesus' ministry was working, and people were believing. This guy who had seen maybe a fraction of the miracles that the disciples had, had faith in Jesus, in Jesus' name, in who Jesus was. So much faith that he truly believed that Jesus' name had the power to drive out demons. And the disciples' first thought was, we need to stop that guy. Side note, um, do you guys ever think that Jesus, being fully God and fully human, ever got a little annoyed with the human part? Maybe a little bit? Like, Jesus would look up to God and say, hey, Father, I know we love those humans we created, why did we make them so frustrating? That was just me? Okay, that's just me writing a sermon at 10 p.m. and how my brain works. I digress. See, where the disciples saw someone on the outside, Jesus saw a new disciple, what we would call a new Christian. Where the disciples saw someone not doing it the way we do it or the way it's always been done, Jesus saw someone doing something in his name. The next thing that God is doing is stirring us to move, stirring in us a need to think differently because our obligation to include others is huge. 
part of the Jesus movement, the Christian religion, a major part is going out and making disciples, is spreading the message of Jesus. This is why it is essentially impossible to be a Christian all by yourself. And so about reaching out, we are obligated, obligated to include others. Now what Jesus says next is, whoever is not against us is for us. Unfortunately, our thought, thought process is typically more like, whoever doesn't do it like us is against us. Whoever doesn't think like us is against us. And it's those thoughts that limit our potential to grow God's church. Now what I am going to say next might be difficult to hear. So I figured my last message before sabbatical was a great way to do it. And the hard thing is this. Sometimes, sometimes we get so caught up in whether church is being done correctly or whether it's being done our way that we stifle what's possible. I grew up going to a very traditional church. I mean, our church organ was on the cover of a church organ magazine. Jealous? I grew up going to this super uber traditional church, uber because we're German. So on my first Sunday here, when I attended the Horizon service for the first time, I was in a bit of shock. I mean, you can just bring your coffee into church. They're okay with that. My church would have had a fit. Anyway, the human part of me, which of course is the whole part of me, couldn't help but look around and make a mental list of all of the things that were different than what I was used to. But you know what I came to realize pretty quickly? That it didn't matter. Because what I heard from people who attended the service that I found so foreign was that lives were changed and new people were reached. Whoever is not against us is for us. So maybe we're the ones who are in the ways sometimes. One of the questions I, get most, I got most often, I, I still get it, um, but I got it most often when I was in seminary, in the interview process, when I was trying to find my first job. The question I got most often was, why aren't young people in church? And um, my answers kind of ranged from, I don't know, I am, <laughs> to, did you ask them? <laughs> I had people at one of us, a synod assembly, come up and ask me, why doesn't my granddaughter go to church? I don't, I don't know her. I, I don't know. Did you ask her? No. I don't, I don't know. But here's the thing. I, the way that I've kind of explained this is that, and you'll appreciate this metaphor as traditional Lutherans, church is kind of like a potluck, okay? <laughs> that we put out all of this food. And think of young people like vegetarians, okay? And all of our meals for some reason or another, has meat in it, except we have one kind of wimpy salad and some jello at the end. Standard jello. How are they going to feel? How are they going to feel attending this potluck where there are two afterthought pieces for them at the end of the buffet? Instead, invitation requires intentionality where we understand who we're inviting and then we create an atmosphere where they will feel welcome and included. Invitation is about intentionality, intentionally creating spaces, and we know that we have done that. Some of you who were at the dinners this past week heard me talk about the difference that the youth spaces in this church make. Because I grew up at a church where we had confirmation in um, either what we call Luther Hall, which was our kind of our common dining space, or we had in the conference room because those were the rooms that were available. Because no one more important than us were using those rooms. And then you come here 
Whereas, no, this room, not only is this room for the youth, it's labeled that it's for the youth. You know what importance a label makes? That this room is theirs, that they belong here, that this space is made for them. Our theme this year for our Ignite Confirmation is this is where you belong. And it's because that we've created these spaces that are for them. That not only can they hear that, but they can see that. And what a difference we know that makes. Here's the thing. The they out there that we think of, they are not against us. The question becomes, how do we tell them that they are invited. And the fourth thing that we're going to talk about this morning, the fourth thing that God is doing is God is rewarding our efforts. Now, I know we don't like to talk about rewards. I think it comes from this historical distinction that we do not believe that the reward of heaven is dependent upon our actions and our efforts. And that is true. That is absolutely true. And nowhere does it say that that's the only reward ever. In fact, Jesus' next line in this text from Mark is, For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. Maybe a better word than efforts would be to say that God rewards our intentions. There is a reward, which is to say that God sees us and knows our intentions, which is to say God blesses those who bless others in his name. It's right there. For the past three weeks, we have been talking about why church is relevant in your life. And I hope that you heard something that will stick with you. I hope that when someone asks you why you go to church, you have an answer. And then... An invitation. Why church? Because it's a place set aside to keep our minds on the divine. Because there's something in it for us. And because it is so much bigger than us. That's why church. Now, that uh, concludes my message. Amen. Uh, but I do want to take just a couple of minutes here since I will not be back with you again until December uh, to just fill you in on a couple of details if you had uh, missed it in you know, the newsletter and there was a couple emails that went out. And that is that I'm going on sabbatical for eight weeks. And the way that I have understood sabbatical that has been mapped out for me is that there are kind of four pillars to sabbatical. And that is you need to work on some sort of ministry project or some sort of ministry research that you need to um, improve your leadership skills, preaching skills, those kind of upfront things, Um, that you need to do something to improve the life of your family or your relationships, and that you need to work on personal wellness and well-being as well. So first pillar of uh, ministry research is I will be digging into everything I can get my hands on, on small groups and small group ministry, kind of answering the question, what's in our way? What are the barriers for us to get to a point where our church culture is not, are you in a small group, but who is in your group? Now, small groups had a big wave in the 90s, but the world we live in now is not the 90s. And so what's different? How do we, how do we pivot to be able to meet those needs. Uh, Second is uh, leadership and preaching. Signed up for all kinds of classes on those, super excited. Um, The third piece, uh, relationships and our family. I figure what better way to improve my family than to become a family. So I'm just gonna get married. (laughs) Seemed like a, check that off the list. Um, I'll also be moving uh, down to Blaine to live uh, with my then husband. And um, I will be one of those commuters on 65 that you wave to and feel sorry for. And then um, personal wellness, super fun fact, I'm taking martial arts classes. So that's fun. Um, So anyway, so that's kind of the next eight weeks. Um, 
I'm obviously sad to not be around you all and not to be here. I will be praying for you as I hope that you also pray for me. And um, while I will not be available for things like weddings or funerals or I won't be around, I will, you will all definitely still be in my prayers. So um, if you don't mind, actually, I'd like to pray over that right now. Good and generous God, I want to give you so much thanks for the spaces that you create in our lives to grow. Lord, I ask that you watch over and bless my time away, but Lord, I also ask that you watch over and bless this congregation. I pray for the leadership of Pastor Keith and Pastor Andy while I'm gone, and I pray that the strength is stirred up in people to step up in new ways to fill the gaps. In your holy and awesome name, I pray. Amen. give thanks at this time for all that God blesses us with and for the gifts inspired by the Holy Spirit for the ministry of the church given by mail, online, text automatically and in our offering baskets today. Let us pray the offering prayer together as printed in our bulletins. Please rise. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things, through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many ways in which you bless us. and We pray for the success of our capital campaign and give thanks for the progress of it. Bless and renew us in our efforts and in our ministries and help us to see what it is you are calling us to in each new day. 
We especially pray your blessing on and guidance of Pastor Emily as she begins her sabbatical and her new life with Kimball during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too, Lord, for those who are sick and suffering in any way, in body and in spirit, whom we name in our hearts at this time. Continue to guide and help us as we continue to struggle with the pandemic and help us to ever support and care for one another and ever bless our Befrienders ministry, which is meeting today as we reach out in love and support to one another through it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too today for Camden Hupfer, who is being baptized today in the Horizon service and for his parents and sponsors. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and on us all and guide and bless us and enable us and our seventh graders who are receiving their Bibles today also to ever grow in you and to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. As Pastor Keith noted that we are handing out Bibles today to our 7th graders, and I'd like to at this time uh, invite any 7th graders we have uh, today forward to receive their Bibles. Wonderful. All right. Well, it's a couple of opportunities for ministry. We have, um, we have many that are receiving them at the 10 o'clock service, so fear not, they are here. Uh, just a couple of opportunities for ministry, as Andy had said at the beginning of the service. If you are joining us online, there are all kinds of links in the video description um, after the video is posted today for the connection card, the message outline, um, and information on how to give. Uh, as Andy also mentioned that our Celebrate Renew uh, campaign, the um, Commitment Sunday, is next Sunday. So if you receive those little cards in the mail, uh, you can bring those with you, or of course we will have copies available here for you as well. Well, the Mission uh, Jamaica Ministry is having a fundraiser this Tuesday evening at Culver's from 4 to 8 p.m. So if you're looking for somewhere to eat, uh, that would be a great option. I've also been asked to announce that choir practice begins this Wednesday, uh, the 29th at 7 p.m. So if you are interested or need more information on that, uh, Aaron Knutsvig has more information. Uh, befrienders meet this morning at 9.30 in the Heritage Room. Uh, school bags are still available to be filled. So if you have any questions on that, uh, contact Elsie or Joanne. Um, also, bags are available at the Parsonage. And a new newsletter just went out at the end of last week, so make sure to check your mailbox or around the church for that as well. Now, please, if you would rise to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you so much peace. Amen. Oh. 
grow in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.